I didn't actually start reading One Piece until I was like 28 years old. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and thank you so much for clicking on my clickbaity title. But it is the truth. I really think the One Piece card game is going to be the best card game ever made. Just based on the brief understanding we have of the rules so far, how the game works, it seems like it addresses some very seriously inherent mechanic flaws that I have with the Dragon Ball Super card game that I think are going to be fixed with the one piece card game that being said i'm going to go into the context of all of this if you guys just want to skip ahead and hear me talk about what the mechanics are you can skip all this but i think a lot of people think that i'm like a way bigger one piece fan than i am dragon ball fan because of all my jolly roger and you know but the truth is, I've been watching Dragon Ball since I was 10 years old. Dragon Ball is like my Bible. I've read all the mangas many, many times. I've watched the show many, many times. Watching Japanese, watching English. I've written research papers on it. I've traveled to Japan searching for Dragon Ball grails. I love Dragon Ball. It is really like my holy textbook that I really base my moral compass off of. I didn't actually start reading One Piece until I was like 28 years old. I had a friend in high school, Mike Christensen. Mike, if you're watching this, thanks for telling me beforehand. Sorry, I didn't listen. But he was like, dude, you got to read One Piece. Like, you know, you got this whole podcast pirate thing going on. I've been telling people I was a pirate since I was six years old. I've been living the pirate life since I was a very young lad. And he's like, you gotta check this thing out. It's all about pirates. And I was like, ah, I don't know if I have room for another J Japanese manga in my life because I'm so into Dragon Ball. But when I was in dental school and I was playing Dragon Ball cards, one of the guys at the locals was like, yeah, One Piece is actually like a way better story than Dragon Ball. And I was like, all right, when somebody like says that about Goku and somebody says something's better than Goku, I need to check it out to make sure that it isn't. Same thing with Gojo Satoru. I saw some meme online that said Gojo is like stronger than Goku. So I watched all of Jujutsu Kaisen, which is great. I love Jujutsu Kaisen actually. And I've watched lots of different mangas and animes now that I've opened my world up but one piece is the best story ever told and anybody that argues with that just hasn't read the story it's the most amazing intertwined well thought out uh, all-encompassing culturally informed creative amazing emotional story i've ever read in my entire life it's so so fascinating i mean i really feel like that story opened my perspective to so many ideas that get me to enjoy the quality of life on a daily basis, regardless of what's going on. I mean, I could be stuck in an airport in Japan for 28 hours and feel like it's one of the greatest adventures of my life because Luffy just has that attitude and it's awesome. And I really have found a way to enjoy the ride day to day a lot more than focusing on the end goal through reading the story and experiencing, you know, what's going on in it. So. With that, I love One Piece. I think it's an awesome story. I love Dragon Ball. They're different. They live in my heart in different places, but I've always identified as a pirate. So One Piece really speaks to me in that way. Now, getting to the game, talking about, I know the title of this is the One Piece card game is gonna be a better Dragon Ball Super card game. I love the Dragon Ball Super card game. It is the best game I think I've ever played in my life. I love Super Smash Bros. also, but they're kind of similar in weird ways. And video game, card game, kind of hard to compare, but Having a game that you play with somebody in person with this level of interaction and the amount you have to think ahead and think out and think of all the different things that could happen, the different interactions, uh, it's so, so deep. And having a main phase where you can do things in whatever order of operations you want really gives you a lot of creativity in how you optimize your turns and hand size and advantage, all this stuff. Like there's a lot of sequencing that goes into it. Now, I can't speak too much about J Digimon. I have played a couple times. Um, it didn't feel as interactive as Dragon Ball. I guess it kind of felt like going from chess to checkers or something like that. But I'm sure there's a high skill cap with that game. It's very popular. I know a lot of people play it. I don't know enough to comment about it, but I think One Piece is going to be better. I mean, it's a way cooler IP. I think. And also this video is my personal opinion. This is not saying that this is fact. This is how it is. I mean, this is what I think. You're welcome to think what you think, but this is my perspective and I'm going to explain why. So basically my biggest gripe with the Dragon Ball Super card game is the dice roll. The dice roll really wins so many games. If you have two players that are playing pretty equal decks, equal skill levels, the dice roll makes a massive difference in who can win. Now, it's still possible to win when you lose a dice roll, 
there's more that comes down to luck, what you see, how your turns go, but the dice roll is so massive. And the reason why the dice roll is so massive is because the turn player always gonna have an energy advantage no matter what. On their turn, they're always gonna have one more, one more energy than the player that went second. Now how the One Piece card game is addressing this, and I think this is amazing, is that the first player charges one energy, or Dawn card in their cost area, and the second player charges two, and then each player charges two after that, so no matter what, the turn player always has one plus energy than the other one. And not only that, but you have a dedicated Dawn deck or energy deck. It's not part of your main deck. You don't have to make a decision each turn. Do I wanna put this card in my energy area? Because if you put that card in your energy area, you might not be able to use it for the rest of the game. So having a dedicated area for that, that's not part of your main deck that you don't need to see in the hand of cards that you draw, you're always gonna have energy every turn. And that energy is not just energy. It also has dual utility. You can boost characters, give them effects. You can assign the Dawn to characters. Now you do have summoning sickness in the game and I do like like in Dragon Ball, how you can play cards and attack with them the ter that turn. But I think having Summoning Sickness expands the length of the game and the stuff you can do with your energy since you aren't attacking with cards the turn you play them. I don't know if removal is going to be a thing or how that's going to work, but being able to summon cards and then the next turn attach your Dawn to them, give them effects, resolve skills, do all that cool stuff. We don't know all the details of those things, but I do have to say, I do really like how this addresses the energy issue with Dragon Ball because these games are energy-based games. The more energy you have or the more dumb or the more cost you can pay, the more skills you can resolve and things you can do in your turn. And that's what makes them exciting is as you go through the game, each turn you get more energy or dawn cards or whatever it is. And it allows you to successively do bigger and bigger things. Now, what's also interesting is that it's a limit to 10. So you know you're working to a certain number and you're gonna get there within five turns. So at five turns, your cost area is gonna be maxed out. And then it looks like you can start doing things where you're actually using skills to make your Dawn cards go back to your Dawn deck, which are gonna be stronger skills. And obviously once you're maxed out on energy, you don't mind them going back once they're used because they're gonna recharge in the next turn. So I think that's very, very cool. I think that's a fascinating mechanic and I'm really excited to see how it plays out. I definitely wanna have a hyper blinged Dawn deck. That is what I'm looking forward to is the shiniest Dawn deck in all the land. The other thing that I think is really cool about this game, and now I think this is a little bit like Digimon. I know Digimon, instead of life, they have something called security. And I think you need to swing suit through security once their security is out now in dragon ball your life once your life is gone the game is over and i've talked about this in some podcasts i've been on if you guys have heard but i talk about check versus checkmate and this is a concept that i've talked about with my friend johnny and miguel if you guys have are out there thanks for bringing this idea to my head but it really has augmented my experience with playing dbs is thinking about check and checkmate right so check means that you're setting your opponent up to lose in the next turn and the checkmate is when they can't do anything about it. But what I don't like about that is Champa. Champa is a card or East Kai, whatever it is, the double strike Kai, when you give a card double strike, if a person is at two life, they lose the game no matter what. So from three to zero is a very dangerous place, right? You can knock that first life and then you can swing with something that's single strike and then all of a sudden it gets double strike. Now, there are things that you can interact with the double strike, like remove the double strike or just take one hit. There's ways to interact with that, but that's something that you have to build in just for one specific card. Now, I don't really like that concept in deck building and I always have felt like Chompa is kind of a cop out. I like it in terms of dealing with unison. Sometimes we want to knock two markers off of unison. It's a great card. I know a lot of people like it, but I've never really run it and I just have never really been a big fan of it. So I really like in the one piece card game, how you have to knock somebody's life off and then you have to swing through it there. That's super cool because that means no matter what, that last battle is always going to be the last battle and you know, it's going to be the last battle. So you can prepare yourself for it differently, which creates a totally different kind of strategy where you're preparing to fight that last fight because you know it's going to be the last fight and i really like that concept a lot more than sneaking in the last fight before somebody thinks they can deal with it and you always kind of have to play around it in dragon ball so it really affects the game state and it affects the strategy and i think it kind of lowers the ceiling of complexity and what you can do offensively and defensively because there's this crutch of this card that can magically give something double strike when it's a single strike I think that's really cool. I think that is a little bit more like Digimon. I may be incorrect about that. Feel free to correct me in the comments below, but I am so, so excited for this game. And not only do I think that this game is gonna be a really good game, but I think the ceiling for it in terms of where it can go and how advanced it can get and how much it can be advertised is gonna be way higher than anything else. 
One Piece is the most popular manga or shonen in Japan. It has been going on for 25 years. It is massive, massive, massive in the culture. It is everywhere. Uh, worldwide, it's massive. It's still going on. There's a current anime, there's a current manga. It's been happening for super, super long. The story is absolutely amazing. The characters are so lovable. They have so many different cool outfits. They change outfits from different islands and they adopt the culture of the islands they go to. And it's just such a liberating, freeing, awesome story that's so motivating and inspiring that I think that building a card game around it is just going to give people another opportunity to interact with it with these beautiful cards that bandai does such an amazing job of printing i mean if you've seen any bandai card game they make such absolutely good looking cards so i'm really excited to see what these cards look like i think there aren't going to be as many licensing hula hoops as there are with dragon ball super and i, I could be wrong about this this is really just speculation um i think that the reason why dragon ball super can't get advertised really overseas is because Toei owns the rights to the Dragon Ball Heroes characters and the Dragon Ball Heroes characters are used as assets in the DBS game. And I imagine Toei doesn't want to give up the rights to those characters to the world licensors so they can't really advertise the game outside of Japan. And with that, the game doesn't exist in Japan. Dragon Ball Heroes exists in Japan and they dump so much money into Dragon Ball Heroes. I mean, it has its own anime that comes out every month. The cards are so advanced in terms of texture foiling and all this stuff. I'm pretty sure DBS is just kind of like a cash cow that makes money because it's surviving and they probably just keep cutting the budget for it and they're like, oh, this is working, you're making money, well, do it for less money. Well, do it for less money. So I think it's kind of going to become more catered towards collectors. We're not seeing it as much with Dragon Ball anymore. The game's getting outrageously complex, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with these Z leaders. I think they may reboot the game. It may become more appealing for a competitive scene, but I kind of foresee the game going in the direction of the collectors and, um, you know, Digimon is having really good turnout at events. Dragon Ball events aren't really selling out. We just had one in San Diego. It was capped at 256 and we only had 206 people. And California is one of the more popular areas to play. So kind of surprising, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I think that the One Piece card game has the potential to be really, really awesome because there's such worldwide interest. It's also gonna have a version in Japan and the Japanese version is gonna be coming out before the American version, and I imagine the blocks are gonna be coming out, you know, Japanese before the, the worldwide versions actually, consistently. So there's gonna be interest for Bandai and Toei for the game to be successful since it's gonna exist in Japan. So that's super, super exciting. I think that the ceiling for this game is just gonna be massive. The depth, the number of characters that exist, the different kinds of archetypes, the different art styles. If you look at the different kinds of art that they've released, it's already amazing. There's like 10 different styles of art that we've seen before we've really even seen physical cards. I think we've seen like seven or eight physical cards on display on the Twitter. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. I'm still gonna be playing Dragon Ball. I'm still gonna be opening Dragon Ball. I love Dragon Ball. It's not gonna like go away from my life. I think I'll always have fun playing it. I really think the most fun way to play the game is just to get cases and open them with your friends and build the archetypes within the set and then play each other because they're designed really well to play with each other. And then, you know, competitively is fun also, but I really uh, think that I'm gonna be definitely doing a lot with the One Piece card game. I hope you guys are as excited for it as I am. I thank you so much for watching this long drawn out video about me talking about how excited I am for it. Now I think that there are things that are inherently built into this game that make it more interesting, give it the potential to be more interesting, more interactive and more balanced than DBS in some ways. I am a dentist. I can without doing a dental tooth tip. If you guys have read or watched One Piece, sometimes Luffy will lose a tooth and then he drinks milk and the tooth grows back. It doesn't work like that you can get a tooth completely knocked out. It's called avulsion. So when a tooth comes completely out of the socket, that tooth is avulsed. It can't break at the root. That's just the crown breaking off, but the full root and the whole thing comes out. It does happen sometimes. People have said to put those teeth in milk in the past. Don't put your avulsed tooth in milk if your tooth avulses. Put it in salt water, actually. Studies have shown that saline preserves the different vital structures within the tooth better. And once you reimplant it, it can reintegrate more effectively rather than leaving it out in the air or putting it in milk. I mean, if you only have milk, maybe put it in that, but definitely get it put back in as quickly as you possibly can because there's a small window of time where that actually works. A lot of those surgeries are unsuccessful, but they can be successful. I'm Joku DMD, thanks for coming by, and I'm so psyched for the One Piece card game. Thank you so much. Oh, also, Probably the reason why I'm most excited for it is because I'm gonna be able to play with my brother. 
My brother said he's gonna play the game with me. I love playing games with my brother. I love playing video games with my brother. I love playing, oh, I haven't played that many card games, but to actually be able to play a Bandai card game with my brother, he doesn't play DBS because it's like too many words on the cards and there's so many different interactions. And like, he's already so suffocated by Dragon Ball, by all my Dragon Ball things that are around me all the time. So I'm really excited that I'm gonna be able to play with my bro. He is my best friend and I'm super psyched to just jam it out with him and learn the game together, get in on the ground level, start shrimping, get some cool cards and, you know, live life free. The life of liberation is the life for me. on the high seas.